Howard, are, are we shocked by the move? Did were Phoenix always seem to be, you know, in contention for the Bradley for in the Bradley Bill trade? But what are we thinking that's going to hold this up, or will this all finally get pushed all the way through? Well, it seems pretty clear it's going to go through. The only question is whether they might expand the deal. We've seen this in the past mm. um, with several different deals, and in fact, we saw it. Another Wizards deal a couple of years back involving their other all-star guard at the time, um, Russell Westbrook, that deal eventually was expanded when <laughs> right. they were uh, sending him to the Lakers. And so um, if I'm recalling that one correctly, yes. I'm, I'm maybe uh, conflating that with another one. And the Anthony Davis one actually several years ago was like this too. You come to terms on the, the, the principles of a deal. And then if you have to, no particular urgency and they've got some time here before Chris Paul's, you know, they've got their contract, uh, guarantee date that they're coming up on but they've got a little bit of time before that often will then search the league somebody else can participate in the deal if, for a different variety of reasons in this case for one specific one which is that the wizards have no use for chris paul at this stage of his career right he certainly i'm sure would li like to land somewhere else the clippers obviously are the team mentioned most often and if you can find a way to in involve a third team and if you're Washington, maybe extract even more assets in a three-team deal than you would in a two-team deal. There's certainly incentive to do that. Sometimes there are cap savings involved or trade exceptions involved. Sometimes you're just trying to get a few more picks somehow in, in, involved in the deal. So you're going to do your diligence um, and, and see where that leads. In terms of surprise, I mean, the only thing I'm surprised about is, is that the Suns were this aggressive to get Beal in the first place because right. I just don't think it's the right move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can say that. I was looking at the roster this morning, and it's Beal, Booker, Durant, Aiden, I think one more player, and that's it. They don't even have a full roster yet. So what are they? do they even have enough to even put around them? Because they look like how are, they're right in the same situation that they were in during the playoffs this past season. A great starting five, but there's nobody to really come off the bench and be a contributor. Yeah, and, and this is why I, I also just caution people not to judge the deal too harshly yet. Like, I will judge it based on the fact that I don't think Bradley Beal was the right move for them at all. Mm, right. And I think it may exacerbate some of the issues that you just listed. But overall, we can't really judge what the Suns will be and all these question marks until the rest of the offseason plays out, right? Like, I, I think they're probably going to trade DeAndre Ayton and bring back multiple pieces, and that will help replenish some of the depth that they badly need. We're as we sit here right now, you're wondering, well, who's their point guard? Or are they going to go without a point guard? And it's just some combination of Beal and Booker and Durant handling the ball. That has its own implications. But maybe they're going to go get a point guard uh, if they're trading DeAndre Ayton, who's the new starting center. They already had just a, a you know bereft bench in the playoffs, as you noted, and it was part of why they lost when they did. And so they've got time to figure all that out. The problem is the combination of their new big three, and call it a big four for the moment if you want to throw Aiton in there, <laughs> right. those four guys are making $162 million combined. The projected salary cap for next season is 134 The projected tax line is 162 So they're already at the projected tax line with just four players. And, you know, as you, I'm sure, are aware, like the new CBA comes into effect at, on July 1st and makes it far more difficult to keep adding players once you have hit these so-called aprons. And so this is the wrong time to be all in with, you know, multiple max guys, including one in Bradley Beal, who can't even stay healthy. Chris Paul in this trade for Bradley Beal could be a buyout situation, which makes him a free agent. How do you see Chris Paul, who I think is the biggest name, but does have uh, at least a, a bit of contribution left in him for a franchise that thinks they can win a world championship. How do you see Chris Paul, this situation for him? Uh, how does it, how does he handle it? Well, his family's still in LA um, and has been ever since his Clipper days. And I, I think probably Chris Paul is going to try to do everything possible to get as close to LA as possible or back to LA. Uh, maybe the Clippers get in on this, this trade with the wizards and Suns, and he lands there anyway. Um, maybe he ends up somewhere else. And, you know, he does have, it's a it's half of his thirty. It's it's like thirty one million on his contract and like right. fifteen million is guaranteed. So if they waive him, I, the date's coming up in a week or so. If you waive him, um, 
then the team is only on the hook for, for the half of, of the salary, and then he's free to go somewhere else. I think if I had to guess, one way or another, he's going to find his way back to L.A., um, <laughs> Probably the Clippers, although I think it'd be interesting if, if the Lakers wanted to chase him. He and LeBron James, of course, are very close. And, you know, uh, you know, there's there will be options for Chris Paul. It's just at this stage of his career, and he's clearly shown signs of, of wear and slowing down. Um, you know, it, it's got to be a team that feels like they're, you know, not a piece away, like a superstar piece away, but a, a, a Chris Paul leadership slash playmaker away from uh, from something. You know, he's not going to a rebuilding situation. He's not going to mid-tier teams. Those don't make sense. Got to be a team that thinks it has a path to, you know, a, a top four seed. And I think more likely than not, uh, as close to L.A. as possible. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 